Shouts out to the niggas who trying to go live with me. I'm not going live with you weird ass niggas. No, stop sending requests. I have no desire to go live. You gonna sit your bitch ass on the other side and listen to me talk. I don't care about your input. Stink. Breathing up all the white man's air. Anywho. <coughs> Nana. Anywho, so. No, you eat your bananas. I'm not eating it. What? You don't, you don't want them more? Here, get a bite. No? All right. Is my music on Apple Music? Go look! Nigga, what the fuck you asking me for? Nigga, just want a conversation as they like talk to me and I'm gonna screenshot it. Jeez, nigga, go look. The fuck? URL 2K in the building, I'll see you. But look, alright. So, I'm really getting tired of this thing where fans is saying shit like battle rappers can't make music. I'm, I gotta address this shit. And I gotta really address it, and I wanna address it in a way that people not taking the time to fully address this shit. And they not really, really looking at what's happening. So, first and most foremost, we have to segregate battle rap because there is a large segregation. There's you gotta split battle rap in half. Now I'm gonna tell you how you gotta split battle rap in half. You gotta separate battle rap by the black side and the white side. You have to separate it. You have to. You just have to. And you gotta separate the Chinese side, you gotta separate it because there's a different type of battle rap. And you also gotta separate it by race and you gotta separate it by freestylers and written battle rappers. You gotta separate it. They're not all the same. That's like saying all black people are the same, all black people are not the same. You got different types of black people. A Jamaican is not a motherfucking Belizean. They both black, but Jamaican is not a Belizean. You tell a Jamaican he a Belizean, you fuck around to get your bumper clock cut. You don't want your bumper clock cut. The nigga cut your motherfucking bumper clock. So, a Jamaican is not a Belizean. And when you say battle rappers, when you say motherfucking battle rappers, uh... A King of the Dot nigga is not a URL nigga. A URL nigga is not a 106 and Park nigga. A 106 and Park nigga is not a Fight Club nigga. It's, it's different. So, in the general public, you have to realize this. When the general public think Battle Rapper, they think 106 and Park. Or they think 8 Mile. No, no, hear me out. When the general public think battle rap, they think 106 in part, or they think Scribble Jam, or they think Grind Time, or they think 8 Mile. They think Gin. When, when you hear battle rap, people just think Gin. Not, not taking away nothing from Gin, because Gin my nigga, but people think Gin. In reality... In actual reality, when niggas, we're talking about, we're not talking about people who know battle rap. We're not talking about, we're talking about the average random nigga in the world. When they hear the word battle rap, they think eight mile. Now, one thing I can say, and I'm going to say this loud and clear. It's the freestyle niggas that can't make music. It's those niggas. It ain't the actual hardcore written niggas who take their time out to do this. It's the freestyle niggas. Them, you look like, 
Your mother looks like she went under the cover and then I socked her in her stomach and it dripped like flubber. It's them. It's them niggas. Them niggas that sign up for rap competitions all day that wear backpacks. Them. Them the niggas who can't make music. So when y'all talk about battle rap, put lead them niggas over there. It's them niggas. It's them niggas that can't make music. Them. The niggas with the big backpacks, with the large Adidas, with the big tongue coming out of the headphones. When you see a nigga like that talking about, yo, I'm ready to spit some fire. Yeah. Push him to the corner. It's them. It's the backpack niggas. It's them. It ain't the rest of the niggas. It's them. Them niggas have given the whole battle rap community a bad rep. You ask them niggas to go in the booth, they gonna spit all type of gibberish. It's them. The swag pack. The swag pack niggas. Them. Them niggas. Garbage. They don't know how to ride a beat. They don't know nothing. They trash. Bro. What I'm saying is this. They really trash. Shouts out to my nigga the selfie rapper in the building. Hey y'all, follow my, my boy the selfie rapper. They trash. Them niggas is trash. All them backpack niggas is trash, bro. Them the niggas that, bro. So on the other hand, you have written. You have people who actually write. Meek Mills is a battle rapper. He's from the battle rap community. Don't ever forget that. Eminem is from the battle rap community. He was also a writer. He he never did good at freestyle. He got smoked. People be forgetting that Eminem got smoked numerous times in battle rap. Like, people be forgetting that, right? Locksmith is also a battle rapper actively. It makes very good music. Like... It was always the freestyle nigga that was trash. Look at the nigga that beat Eminem. He was trash on wax. He beat Eminem because he is a freestyler. But he was, what's the name, Juice? What's the nigga named Juice? Trash. This is what I'm saying is the freestylers. This is the hardcore freestyler. No. Selfie rapper, you not a battle rapper though. You a, you a musical, it's a difference. If you a musical freestyler, then you a musical freestyler. That's different. Lil Wayne is also a musical freestyler. He has tuned his mind into ways to freestyle on the, on the beat. That's different. We're talking about the battle rap niggas. The actual battle rap niggas. Them niggas trash on wax. So look. It was a lot of niggas that was actually good, bro. And it's a lot of niggas that's still good. Locksmith is extremely good on wax. And he's a battle rapper. Right? Motherfucking... Uh, motherfucking Loaded Lux makes very good music. Tsunami Surf makes very good music. Eminem makes very good music. Meek Mills makes very good music. Uh, the list goes on. Jay Z, I pull up a rap battle right now at Jay Z, multiple ones. Y'all niggas fail to realize. The fans fail to realize there was a time in hip hop where you wasn't even allowed to make. You wasn't even allowed to rap if you didn't prove yourself. What do you... This is what y'all don't... My nigga, do, y'all got Google. Y'all got YouTube. You could get online and type in Busta Rhymes Rap Battle. You're going to see plenty of Busta Rhymes Rap Battles. You can get online and type in Jay-Z Rap Battles. You're going to see plenty of Jay-Z Rap Battles. You get online and type in Kendrick Lamar Rap Battles. You're going to see plenty of Rap Battles. You get online and type in Compton AV Rap Battles. You're going to see plenty of Rap Battles. You get online and type in Wyclef Rap Battles. You're going to see plenty of Rap Battles. Everybody was a battle rapper, bro. Every single rapper in the hip-hop community was a battle rapper. You wasn't allowed to rap unless you proved yourself. That is the era that hip-hop started on. Hip-hop was founded on proving yourself. Big Sean is a battle rapper. ASAP Rocky is a battle rapper. ASAP, I will, hold on, my nigga. I'll pull up a battle right now. ASAP Rocky sound like a typical URL nigga. Right now, I'll pull it up right now. ASAP Rocky was a battle rapper. This is French Montana 
was a battle rapper. He has numerous battles online, Fight Club. French Montana was supposed to battle Murder Move. He's an active battle rapper. This is actual facts. I have to use it. Give them to me. You're going to start freaking out. Foxy Brown was a battle rapper. French Montana was a battle rapper. Motherfucker, all these, everybody was a battle rapper, bro. Most Def was a battle rapper. KRS-One was a battle rapper. Everybody was a battle rapper. Biggie was a battle rapper. French Montana was a battle rapper. A lyrical battle rapper. This, this is what y'all not understand. You know how niggas be like, yo, French Montana low-key not even lyrical. He used to be a lyrical battle rapper. He switched it up. You know what's even crazier? I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a name that y'all ain't even expecting me to throw. I'm gonna throw a name. Okay. I'm gonna throw a name that y'all wasn't even expecting. Tory Lanez is a battle rapper. Dad, can you know who a battle rapper that y'all don't really know? Cause y'all so sleep and y'all don't even use Google. Y'all don't use YouTube. Okay. Little Uzi was a battle rapper. Shaolin? This is what y'all don't even know. Well, Little Uzi was a battle rapper in Philadelphia. I remember back in the DVD years. He was a little nigga. He was a battle rapper. He used to have a backpack on and all that. He was a backpack rapper. Lil Uzi was one of them niggas with the headphones and the backpack and all. He was a backpack rapper. Y'all don't even know this. Lil Uzi was an actual battle rapper. You could get online. Y'all have, oh, y'all have Google. Y'all have YouTube. You can get online typing Lil Uzi old freestyles or Lil Uzi old battle raps. It'll pop right up. Lil Uzi, bro. Little Uzi, bro. All these niggas, bro. You don't understand. Y'all fella realize that boy is from Philadelphia. Don't let this new land him on a bad way. Land him up. Don't let that fool you. That man is from Philadelphia. Don't let this whole chokers and chains and all that shit fool. That man is from Philadelphia. Bro, what I'm telling y'all is, bro. There was a time in hip hop where niggas was like, oh, okay, well, y'all ain't appreciate our lyricism, so we gonna start doing fuck shit. Niggas start doing fuck shit, start popping. And what I'm saying is this, bro. Everybody is a battle rapper. Every single nigga in hip hop is a battle rapper. And all your favorite rappers, Ludacris is a battle rapper. T.I. is a battle rapper. Everybody in the hip hop community is a battle rapper. Now, I'm gonna tell you the difference. Right? What's up, big dog? I like when you chill when I'm talking. You chopping up. You gon' you sucking at all this info. When you get older, you're gonna be like, my daddy put me up on dummy game. But look, right? This is what I'm saying. The difference between battle rappers and music industry rappers. Battle rappers are like UFC fighters. The music industry is WWF or WWE. This is the difference. Battle rappers are like UFC fighters and the music industry is WWF. In order for you to get into the music industry, you have to go, okay, do I want to stop fighting for real? Do I want to do fake shit? Do I want to have help? Do I want to have shit scripted? What we fail to realize and what most artists fail to realize and most, most fans, not artists, what most fans fail to realize is most of your favorite artists, these big records are not... Like battle rappers, we we walk through the world solo. You walk through the world like nigga, I got it, I do it, I figure it out by myself. And then when shit don't hit, you just like, well, I keep trying, right? What we fail to realize in the music industry, these big records are created. Hey, stop. 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 No. Who had it first? I did. Give it back to him. Just tell him. Right. In the music industry, it's help. This is what y'all don't understand. It's help. People got help. People got actual help. It's help in the music industry. These big records are not like... These big records are not like just something they just went in the studio. It's help. Look, I'm going to tell y'all this. 
go to your favorite rappers go to your favorite rappers album cover like if you got some old cds go to your favorite artist album cover and then open up the open up the booklet you know if you bought a cd if you really bought a cd because to be honest i think that's really why they came up with streaming services so fans don't get the books no more because when you go back to some of your favorite artists Go to your favorite artist. If you got a CD right now, an actual CD of one of your favorite artists back in the days, open up the book and go to the actual song. Go down and scroll and look at the credits. You going to see a whole football team worth of people. <laughs> nigga, it be like, nigga, it be like fucking 10 different writers, nigga, four producers. Nigga, executive, executive producer. How you got an executive producer on a record? Man, if Drake dropped an actual CD, well, no, no, listen to me, my nigga. If Drake dropped an actual CD, like I'm talking about a CD, a hard copy with a book, bitch, that should look like the dictionary. What are you talking about? <laughs> if, if Drake dropped the actual CD with a book, <laughs> that should have looked like the Bible. <laughs> Fuck you mean? <laughs> if he dropped a CD with a book, the shit have looked... <laughs> It should have looked like the library. Like, order this new Drake and it comes with its own library. <laughs> what you mean? Like, this is what I'm saying, bro. It's not that battle rappers can't make music. It's just battle rap niggas don't want help. Because we take pride in working for ourselves. Battle rapper niggas be like, nigga, I ain't let no nigga help me. You crazy. Nigga, your regular industry rapper be like, nigga, I ain't writing nothing. Yeah, that's what I got. Anybody got some verses? Slime block in the middle. Uh, okay. no, like, nigga, any. Square. You need a bigger square. Bro, niggas got help. This is what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> nigga got nigga got the table of context. Nigga got all type of shit. Bro. Battle rap niggas don't got help. This I'm telling y'all this because this shit I've been learning since I've made the transition from the ring to the actual music industry. Records are not just made, they're produced, bro. Y'all fail to realize this old town road shit, that old town road shit, that shit that wasn't no one, that ain't no hit record. That shit was produced, bro. There's a whole writing team behind that. There's a whole team behind that. Lil Nas X is a fucking... He a stunt double. It's some that's somebody else. There's a whole team behind that. It's a stunt double. He just in position to make people laugh. And, bro, it's a whole team behind that. These records are not look, y'all don't understand. Records are not just made and produced. They're not they they're produced, bro. You gotta have you gotta have specific type of producers you gotta have specific type of instruments you gotta have specific type of sounds you also gotta know the magic hey what's up baby? Uh, you also gotta know the magical tempo bro it's a magical tempo y'all don't even know it's a tempo it's a tempo inside the music industry that if you produce at that tempo it's an automatic hit people don't understand this it's so bro it's so many things inside of this music industry that y'all don't really know about. It's a magical tempo. If you produce in between those tempos, you automatically got a hit. It's magical frequencies, it's certain sounds, it's certain instruments you're supposed to use. It's all type of shit inside the mute in the, that you're supposed to know. The regular artists don't know this. Battle rap niggas really don't know this. But when you get in the music industry, you know. When you sign to a label, you don't make records. They bring records to you. <laughs> Y'all didn't know this? When you sign to a label, you don't make records. They bring records to you. They go, hey, this is a record that's going to hit. We want you to do this. <laughs> you get hit. They feed you hits. And then how they feed you hits, right? 
how they feed you is they'll give you a bigger rapper. They'll give you an artist that's already on on the hook. So so the record called Magli Pop because that rec- that rapper already owned from a hit that he was on from another. It's a whole cycle. Look. It's a whole cycle. This rap game is a whole cycle, bro. It's an entire cycle that y'all really don't understand. It's a game. I keep telling y'all that it's a game. It's a full game. And y'all got to understand how this shit works. Records are not just thought of. They're produced. They're produced, bro. They're produced. You... You're not going to find none of the information unless you get inside the music industry. Then they're going to tell you. People ain't going to tell you unless you're inside, unless you're on the other side. They're not going to tell you. They produce. You got to produce. It's also sampling. People under, people fail to realize sampling, right? There's a way to sample without sampling. Drake does this a lot, right? Drake is the ultimate sampler without sampling, right? Um, Like, uh... Like how Drake used rapper Fote whole swag on, on, I forgot, I think it was one of those YG songs, or one of those songs that Drake was on, but he stole rapper Fote whole, whole shenanigans in front to back, used it, right? Now, this is a way to sample without sampling. Subconsciously, and what we just talked about yesterday about DNA code, right? DNA code is passed down through our ancestors and we remember things from that our parents remember. We also taste things that our parents used to taste. We get habits and all that shit. We also fall victim to music that our parents listened to back in the days. Right? So when you a little kid and you hearing Drake rap like rapper Fote and you not even knowing subconsciously why you like the record, it's because you already heard it before. It's already been played inside your DNA. So melodically, you already are familiar with it. This is a way that artists sample. This is called an artist sample. You can get away with it. It ain't no way to even, you can use somebody whole get down. It ain't, it's, this is how you get away with it, artist sample. So when you get familiar, when you hear the record and you like, damn, that sound hard, you automatically familiar with it because it's already a part of, you already heard the record, your parents already heard the record. I'm cool with Drake, that's my man, that's why I can talk however I want about him, because I'm, I'm actually a good friend. The other friend's gonna lie to you. I'm a good friend. Where I'm from in the hood, selfie teller, man, you do some weird shit, homies go get on, man, that's weird. Man, he bullshit. Man, the homie's not just going to let you get away with anything. I'm from that and We don't got yes man in our thing. The homie's going to tell you about yourself. Man, you must be. Get up out of here. Right? So, I'm from there. I, if I'm your friend, I'm going to keep it real with you. I ain't going to never just... I ain't going to never just... Just walk through the thing being a yes man. No. We ain't gonna just walk. We ain't gonna just walk through life just being a yes man, man. You weird, man. You doing weird shit. What's wrong with you? I'm still your boy, but you musty. Ew, put some deodorant, man. What's wrong with you? Yeah, that's my cousin and all that. He stank. What man, nigga ain't gonna just be no yes man. You crazy? I don't care. If we the best friends. I'ma tell a nigga about himself. Oh, uh, ain't that right, bitch? Oh. What are you doing? But no, right? So, like I said, like records is produced, bro. I learned that because look, I'ma tell y'all something. When I was trying to make my transition, right? Look, I'ma be honest with y'all. When I was trying to make my transition, I was doing a bunch of records by myself, right? I was just in a room, just making beats and just doing records. And I kept wondering, I'm like, why these shits ain't hitting? Right? I'm like, why? They, people like them, but they like, they, there's something missing. I kept telling myself, it's something missing from the records, right? There's something missing, right? So then I finally hooked up with Willie B. You know, y'all know who Willie B is. Grammy nominated Willie B. Produced Rigor Mortis for Kendrick Lamar. Produced Black Out for Asshole. O3 Adolescence for Jacob. You know, I don't even want to, you feel me? I ain't even trying to throw my man out there like, like D that nigga. You feel me? Anywho, 
So I got with Willie. And Willie started playing records for me. And I started hearing certain shit. And I'm like, oh, shit. I hear this sound, I hear this tone, I hear this frequency, this beat is made it. Hey, what's the tempo? I start asking questions. Man, what's the tempo to that? He's like, man, it's a 90. I'm like, oh, damn, man, I've been producing shit. In, when you just make beats, you be producing shit in weird tempo. Man, 131s and shit. Kicking Stop kicking. Nigga, I done had beats at 142 tempo. What the fuck type of shit is this? He talking about day your shit be all over the place. I said, man, I'm I just be producing. What sound good? He said, man, that ain't it. Oh, all right, cool. So bam, Will starts showing me the frequencies. He starts showing me the uh, he starts showing me the sounds. He starts showing me all different type of shit. He's showing me like, yo, Dave, I want you on this type of shit. This record sound like this. This got this instruments in there so you can rap about this because this going to touch this specific part of the body. This is going to touch this specific part of the mind. Rap about this. Some wheels start giving me the training wheels, bro. That's why I I'm, I never, I ne me and Will going to ride it out to the end. He started giving me the training wheels. Like, no, not like that, like this. Also, it's certain things Will told me to do. Like, he'd be like, yo, the, when you say that part right there, Lift your voice up, right? When you say that part right there, lift your voice up high because if you got a deep tone on the bass, like if your voice is deep, when the bass come in, it's gonna over, it's gonna collab the, it's gonna like congest the ear. So you gotta like, like you gotta go a high pitch right there on that bass drop, and then it was certain things Will was telling me, and I was like, oh shit. Then it was another thing he told me. Said, look. Listen to how this song sound. This is how your song sound when you just record through your microphone at home. Boom. Then he said, listen to how this song sound. He said, all right, let's record that same song over. But we're going to record it through the big board. We're going to have the Avalon and all the racks hooked up. Then when you record through all the big racks, your shit sound completely different, bro. That's why I'm telling y'all, it's, it's so many little small things that go into music that is aligned with the human body. Bro, when I, when I first got an Avalon, I said, oh my God. When you when you record regular, man, and the bass, your highs and lows, whatever, when you record through the Avalon, bro, your whole, I swear to God, bro, your whole, your whole, the Avalon, it's a, it's a, it's a program. I mean, it's a pro, it's like a external device compressor called the Avalon. When you record through that, your whole, your, all your vocals and all that sound like some magical shit. So what I'm saying is, right, it's so many aspects to actually making music, bro. What's the Avalon? Go Google Recording Avalon, <laughs> just re Google that. Avalon recording compressor. It ain't a plug-in. Fuck the plug-in. You got to get the actual rack. The Avalon. It's a vocal. It's like a vocal Avalon controller, man. Look, I used to be like, man, I could record in my house, man. Hey, I ain't got to go to no big studio. Shit, yes, you do. You ain't listen to me. All that home recording studio shit, that shit cool. That shit cool. You can make your little SoundCloud tracks and all that. But when you want your shit to touch the whole world, you got to go. Th you think that big old mixer board, that $100,000 million mixer board with all that shit just in there for nothing? You crazy. That shit like a magical infinity box. No, that big old, that big old SL board and all them magical buttons and all that, man, that shit like an infinity box, man, that shit do some shit to the lyrics. I know, I been, bro. No, not people. Man, I went in, I remember one time, I, I forgot whose studio I was, man, I was working with John Connor, man, we in Dr. Dre's studio, right? John Corner, he like, man, I'm about to, because I got the verse from John Corner. He like, man, I'm about to record it right now, man. He recorded this shit right there for me and sent it to me. The song was mixed already. I said, wait, 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 wait. 
listen to me. We in Dre Studio. No. He recorded the verse. It was mixed already. Like all effects and everything was on it as he was recording. I said, what type of shit is this? They didn't listen to me. They didn't touch no knobs or nothing. He just sent it straight to me like that. It was already. So I got my, I got his verse, right? So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to just record mine at the house. You feel me? Because we just run out of time. So I get to the house. I'm recording mine, man. I'm steady trying to add all type of plugins and all that to make my shit sound like his. It was nothing I could do. I'm online buying extra programs. I'm buying shit. I just spent about six hundred dollars buying plugins and all type of shit. Man, I man some nigga nigga high key robbed me. Man, I said man, how how I get that industry sound? He said man, you gotta buy this Dr. Dre plugin for two hundred. Man, I went and bought a bunk bunk ass Beats by Dre plugin and all that. Man, that shit ain't do nothing. Man, man, it was nothing I could do. At that moment, it clicked in my head. There's a reason why they got these big old studios and big old boards and all that, man. That shit magical. Them big old boards. Them big old boards is magical. Y'all don't understand. That shit do some shit to your vocals. So, boom. Then... My first time in Atlanta, I went to Patchwork Studios, right? Patchwork is the biggest studios in Atlanta. Shouts out to my man, Kenny Mix. I really fuck with Kenny Mix because I started to understand how important a mix is, right? A mix is so goddamn important to how far your song is going to go. A mix. Hear what I'm saying? A mix is important to how far your song's gonna go. Some people, human beings, ears are tuned to like certain sounds and certain frequencies. If your engineer don't really notice, your music will not go far. I don't give a fuck how dope the record is. If your engineer don't really understand this, I don't care how dope your record is, if you don't get it mixed by the right people, it ain't going. Bro, when I went to Patchwork Studios and I sat in there, you can go Google him. Kenny Mix, Patchwork Studios. You can go Google him. This nigga is the goat. He is the goat of all goats of mixing. I sat with Kenny Mix and I was asking him, about mixing and all that stuff so he put up a mixing session when i seen the way kenny mix mix i said oh we in a this is witchcraft this is great a witchcraft what, what is this man he had he had a mixing station that i never even the shit looked like something from a men in black spaceship man it didn't have no mouses it didn't have it just had a bunch of wheels everywhere Right, man. He he said I mix according to waves. It I don't mix. He said I don't mix just listening to the song and the audio and vocal. I go inside each sound. So he went inside the the sound. You know how you hold on. Let me show y'all what he did. Hold on, let me show y'all quick. Let me pull up a session so y'all can see what he did man so y'all can understand what this man did man he had some area 55 shit fuck you mean area 51 he had some shit area 51 don't even got say what's up y'all say hello say bye bye see you bye bye see you bye bye the button, mister. Say bye bye. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, right. Oh shit, nigga, camera bleary. 
All right. See this shit? He had some shit where it was like ah. wheels, right? And the shit opened up. To this, right? He was inside. He went inside of there and it was like a Tron bike. You know the Tron bike? He went inside the Tron bike thing and he started driving around the lines and like cutting off edges. It was like a Tron bike. You know the movie Tron? It was like a Tron bike, but it had like a lawnmower on it. And it started, he started cutting the edges of the ways. All right, look. See how it, hold on, let me show you. Hold on, hold on, let me, hold on real quick. Come here, Peekins, sit down right here. 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 Play with this. Here. Play with this. Whoa. What's this? Alright, let me show you, right? See this? See how it's like a down thing and it's like that? The curve? Man, he was trimming all of these back up. So it was like clean square. Clean square. Clean square. It wasn't no like, it wasn't no these little off lines. Clean cut. Wham. Clean cut. Wham, wham, wham. I said, what type of magical warlock witchcraft? You, what is this? He said, you ever wonder why Mike and all them sound extremely perfect? This is why. I said, oh, uh, uh, shit. Uh, uh. This some shit, shit. This some shit shit. I said, oh, how the fuck you do it? He said, man, I'm a professional engineer. I'm a professional mix. This, at that moment, when I left from Patchwork Studios, I realized music is deeper than what we think, bro. I, I realized music is way deeper than what we think. And there's a lot of things inside music that the average artist don't really know about. We're not really even thinking about Music is some magical shit. Oh. Music is some magical, magic is some magical shit going on inside these sounds of free. It's some magical, bro. And this shit is aligned with us. And once you start to understand that it's aligned with us, bro, it's some shit. And the higher up people know. They know the shits. They know what's aligned with us. They know what's going to work. They know. They know. They know what we going to like before it even come out. They know this specific song is aligned to a certain group of people. Because we added certain tribal sounds that will remind their DNA. This is how you hear a song and you automatically like the song. You can't you can't even fathom why you like the song so much because it's automatically aligned to you. Bro, it's bro, this music shit is crazy. So um what they do, right? I'm going to tell you something. When you buy MIDI MIDI instruments, you buy MIDI controllers. Hey, no, no, don't go back there, big dog. Over here, come on. Hey, come on. When you buy MIDI controllers and you buy like other like GMO instruments, you'll never, it'll never get what you need to get out of it because the instruments have been dumbed down. You know how they say like, Rappers being dumbed down and all that shit. No, like a lot of these programs and instruments have been dumbed down. They they like filtered. Right? Like a lot of the instruments are filtered. When they're GM they're literally GMO instruments, bro. Like I'm dead ass serious. They're GMO plugins, bro. They're filtered. So you ain't gonna never get the full harmonics that you supposed to get out of this. When I play my piano, when I play my MIDI keyboard, I man, I got the best of the best instruments. When I play my MIDI keyboard, I be like, it sounds cool. When I go play an actual real piano, I be like, it's something else in here. Play, I don't give a fuck what pro program you got. When you go play an actual real live piano versus a MIDI keys, it's something else, bro.
you can go do it right now in any store. You can go to Guitar Center, play a real computer. I mean, play a real keyboard versus a MIDI keyboard. It's something else inside just real music. This is why songs with samples hit so hard. Because the sample comes from real organic music being played. This is why most of the songs with samples always become hits over and over and over, right? You know what song will always be a hit and you know what sound will always be a hit no matter what era it come out? That Bone Thugs first of the month sample. Man, that shit gonna be a hit no matter how many years it come out because the sample is organic. That shit gonna be a hit no matter how. Look, Michael Jackson beat it. It don't matter what kid. It don't matter what when you born. You could be born in 2050. You listen to Michael Jackson, the kid will automatically be addicted. Why? Because the music is played from a kid. Michael Jackson is Peter Pan, whether y'all want to accept it or not, he's a Peter Pan, and his music comes from a child. His music stems from his inner child. So, since the music was made from him being a child, a child artist, his music, and all those emotions that come from him being a child, it automatically goes back into the music, which makes children automatically like it, on top of how it's produced and the harmonics and the frequencies. Children automatically get addicted to Michael Jackson. Off the gate. Off, it don't matter, bro. It don't matter what era Michael Jackson drop a record. Children are going to be addicted to it. It's based on the way the songs are produced, bro. You got to understand this shit. That's why, like, what I'm doing... That's why, if you notice, like, I ain't drop... I've been dropping a little shit just to keep y'all, like, okay, daylight working. You know, that's dope. But, like, I haven't dropped... I'm not in a rush to put out my next project because I want to go fully organic with this shit. I want live guitars. I want... I want... I want, like, actual drums. I want, like... I want... Like Congo drums, I want like I want real music. Like I want like war horns. I want all like I want I want so much different stuff inside of this next project because I want it to align to a specific way of the body. It's a lot that I'm doing with the next wave of my album. Let there be light is cool, light skin is cool, that shit is cool for the general public. But I understand what music is and it can change the world. Michael Jackson music changed the world. And it's still changing the world to this day. That's not music to me. Michael Jackson didn't make music to me. He made, to me, he made things that is going to sit with us for the rest of eternity because the music was made with a message. So that's kind of what I'm on as far as the next wave of the music that I'm making. I'm not trying to make a radio hit. I'm not trying to make nothing. I'm trying to figure out how to tap into that type of music, that type of production, and those type of words that, and that type of sound that can stay here for a long time. That is, that's golden. That's what I'm on. How to put my, like, I'm like, I do vocal training. Like, I do so many things that I'm doing right now to try to figure this shit. Tupac also got it, right? I really wish Tupac and Michael Jackson could have worked. I think that combination right there would have changed the entire everything. I think we all have select individual beings. Like, imagine if we would have got a Tupac, a Michael Jackson, and a Nip record on the radio. Tupac? Tupac featuring Nipsey Hussle with Mike on the hook. We would have won. That new Tupac featuring Michael Jackson, Nipsey Hussle, and, and J. Cole, and Kendrick. We would have won. Pac and Mike do a joint album, we would have won. <laughs> if Pac and Mike would have did a, a joint album, we would have won. 
like the war would have been won. We would have won the whole music. It would have won. Don't let Prince get involved. Don't let Prince and Mike. Prince Mike Pocket Nip does a joint collaboration project. Oh, we would have won. But, you know, I'm about to get up out of here. I just wanted to really break that whole thing down about the whole battle rappers and music shit and what's really happening in the music industry. I just want to break that down, right? Um, Like I said before I go, it's not that battle rappers can't make music. It's just that battle rappers don't have the help that some of your favorite artists have. They also don't have the production that some of your favorite artists have. And they also don't have access to some of the biggest studios that some of your favorite artists have. So... With that being said, like I said, it's not that battle rappers can't make music. It's just battle rappers don't really have the help. So I think once battle rappers do get the help and they do get the right people behind them that is willing to help them mold, and not only are they willing to help them mold, the battle rappers got to be willing to mold also. Battle rappers are stubborn, right? Because we come from a world of fighting and anger and aggression and where it's okay to be yourself and be an individual and be a loner and don't let nobody tell you shit. That's the world that battle rappers come from. When you get into the music industry, if you're not letting people mold you into an artist, then you won't be you won't be able to become an artist. But the thing with the music industry is you got to be willing to become artists. They have things set for you and there's ways and rules that you have to follow in the music industry in order for you to blow. So... To all my actual battle rappers who are trying to make that transition, all you have to do is go along with the flow, bro. Go along with the flow and listen and be humble and take in advice, constructive criticism. Somebody don't like something, change it. Listen to those people who make these big records. Listen to them. They're not going to send you the wrong way, right? Stay true to your craft. And the thing is, once you get a battle rapper to fully cross over, they become the best artists in the world. Eminem is a prime example. He sold the most. Eminem sold the most records out of all the rappers. Why? Not because he's better than everybody. Not because he's he's a battle rapper. Eminem is labeled the most sold rapper and labeled the best lyrically because what? He's a battle rapper. He's just a battle rapper that Dr. Dre got behind and said, I'm going to mold you into an artist. He's a battle rapper. He is labeled the best rapper ever. No, it has nothing to do with it because he's white. We're, we're not talking about, we're not talking about skin color. We're talking about actual lyricism. We're not talking about skin color. We're not talking about none of that. Like, I fuck with Eminem a lot, but today I'm going to be serious. We're not talking about actual, we're not talking about race, we're not, we're talking about creativity. His creativity compared to your other rappers. People were afraid of Eminem because he was an actual battle rapper. Eminem's entire career is based off battle rap. You only get one shot, do not miss your chance to blow, this, that's a battle rap record. Eminem entire career is based off battling. He battled his mother. He battled Kim. He battled fucking Fred Durst. He battled uh, Hoobastank. He battled Britney Spears. He battled Mariah Carey. He battled Benzino. He battled Ja Rule. That his whole career is battle rap. He battled motherfucking D'Angelo Bailey in the eighth grader who was obnoxious. He battled motherfucking Stan. He battled, nigga, losing himself. He battled drug addiction. His whole career is a battle. He battled Hoover Snake, right? Eminem used to target all the rock bands. His whole career is a battle. All he does is battle. And when he doesn't battle, y'all actually say Eminem is whack. I keep telling y'all, I think, what's the name? Uh, what, what, what was his last album before Kamikaze? Um, Revival. I keep telling y'all that. I think Revival was one of Eminem's best albums. Why? Because he actually had content. He's actually talking about things that matter. I think Revival was his best album as a human. But Eminem already built his fans off destroying people. So if he not destroying people, people don't give a fuck. Why? Because he's a battle rapper. 
he is a battle rapper and will always be a battle rapper and that's what the fans want to see they want to see Eminem destroy people. They want him to. They want him to go at people. Eminem was whack. He started beefing with MJ, G, G, MGK, whatever his name is, and Eminem back. Look, they want to see him battle. They want to see him battle people on wax, and they would love to see the nigga battle for real. This is actual facts. He's a battle rapper and will always be a battle rapper. And the fans love that about him. Eminem sells the most because he's a battle rapper. People say Eminem is the best because he's a fucking battle rapper. This is actual facts. He's just a battle rapper that people actually, like, that people cared about and got behind. If you put Loaded Lux in the studio with Dre... It'd be over for the whole industry. You put TS, you put Surf in the studio with Dre, and Dre actually produce for Surf. It'll be over for the whole industry. You put any battle rapper in the studio and have him produced by the biggest producer in the fucking game. It'll be over for the whole industry. This is actual fact. Kendrick Lamar is a battle rapper. He got in there with the right people, and now he's at the top of the music industry. He's not at the top of the music industry because he's just regular Kendrick Lamar. The nigga's a battle Battle rapper. Everybody is a fucking battle rapper. All the best battle, all the best rappers in the world's fucking battle rappers, bro. Y'all niggas don't know this, bro. Y'all niggas don't know this, bro, because y'all didn't grow up in these niggas' era. Y'all didn't grow up in the streets. You put a battle rapper in the studio. Hey. You put a battle rapper in the studio. But one of the big producers, bro. Alright. Come here, big dog. What up, big dog? Alright, yo, so I got some stuff I gotta take care of my spots, bro. I hit y'all niggas back in a minute.